It's been about a minute, so I'm going to kick things off. Uh, before I forget, I want to mention um, Brian uh, with us at Reconary. He'll be posting a link into chat um, where you can sign up to join in on the Atomic Red Team Slack channel if you're not in there already. Um, and Brian's also going to be posting a bunch of resources. Like if, um, if you're new to Atomic Red Team, want to get started, if you're new to the industry, um, he's going to be posting a ton of re uh, resources to the Atomic Red Team Slack. So please check that out. And um, yeah, expect to, to see that there. And thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. So uh, we'll, we'll get started. Um, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, thanks for spending your time with us to hear about our respective career journeys using Atomic Red Team as the like central theme around that. Um, we've got an awesome panel of people here with us today. Um, all InfoSec professionals of varying backgrounds and uh, experience. So um, I'm Matt Graber, I'm the Director of Research, uh, Threat Research at Red Canary. Um, so why don't we go around and everyone, uh, I want you to introduce yourself. So uh, at a minimum, um, let us know your, your name, uh, what you do for work, and how long you've been in InfoSec. So Carrie, why don't you take it away? Okay, Carrie Roberts here, and I've been in InfoSec really, I got interested in InfoSec in 2010 when I was a web app developer, when my web app miserably, miserably failed a pen test, which I didn't even know what those were at the time, and I didn't even know what the vulnerabilities were that they wrote me up for and I had to learn. And I got super interested and wanted to n never feel like that again, <laughs> failing a pen test. So I got interested, took a bunch of training from SANS, and got my first InfoSec job, I think, in 2013. So I started out as a pen tester and then moved to Red Team and now Blue Team, but I still really keep pulse on Red Team stuff because I love to learn about attacks and uh, figure out how to defend against them. So it's it's really a little, little of both worlds, so it's a nice spot for me to be in. And uh, there was one more item we were supposed to tell. Did I cover all the questions? What do you do like day to day, Carrie? Uh, oh, uh, well, one big thing I do is uh, I have a big interest in Atomic Red Team. I see the value in uh, scripting, having little scripts that execute a, a big variety of tactics and techniques um, and how those can be used as a repeatable way to uh, check our detections and even just learn about attacks in the first place. It's like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And wow, that looks easy. Um, and so I, I work a lot with the Atomic Red team, also one of the maintainers for the project after I got interested in it over this last year. It's been a great experience for me, which we'll talk more about today. And um, so I work on building defenses against uh, such things as we find in Atomic Red team. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Valentina? Yes, um, I'm, um, I'm a currently a threat intelligence analyst at Deloitte Argentina. And I like to think of myself as a, a baby threat hunter because I'm uh, still learning and I'm kind of trying to help others learn along the way. Cool, thank you. And Hari. Uh, yeah, I'm Hari. I'm, I'm a student at the uh, University of Colorado Boulder. I work as an information security intern and I build tools for the information security at Walmart. So that's it. Awesome, thanks. So again, I'm Matt Graber. I'm the Director of Threat Research at Red Canary. I've been at Red Canary for a little over six months now. I've uh, been in InfoSec for, I believe, a little over 11 years now. Uh, I got my start in InfoSec uh, in the offensive space started off doing red teaming, and then I transitioned into more of like, a, uh, like an exploitation and uh, like offensive research type role. Um, from there, went into malware reversing, and then uh, transitioned into a consulting role, doing both uh, offensive and uh, like defensive capability development, uh, which eventually brought me uh, here to Red Canary, where uh, I, lead up our threat research team and help uh, Red Canary and our detection engineers 
uh, primarily um, uh, expand our detection coverage and ensure that our detectors are as resilient as possible. And what, what I mean by resilient is uh, resistant to evasion and really like maximize the shelf life of the detections that, that we have. So um, yeah, let's dive right into Atomic Red Team. Um, so personally, I'm relatively new to Atomic Red Team. Um, it was uh, Casey Smith and, and Mike Haig who introduced me to it a while back. Uh, when they were given talks about it at, at conferences. And um, it really appealed to me as just a, co a really convenient way to um, describe a, a test or like in the context of Atomic Red Team, like describe a procedure. Like if we're talking about TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, it's like a schema to describe a procedure that is both descriptive, consistent, and repeatable. And so that really appealed to me. And when I got to Red Canary, uh, there was a really unique opportunity for me to dive right into it and to use it to really like supplement our internal detection program. So internally at Red Canary, uh, we're generating a ton of atomic tests. Uh, we, um, at any detectors that we do develop internally, like we want to be able to test them somehow. And Atomic Red Team is, is a huge component uh, in that overall uh, testing strategy that we employ. Another thing that was enticing to me is I've got a fairly extensive uh, background with PowerShell. And when I saw that uh, like Carrie was one of the main developers um, and putting a lot of support uh, into the Invoke Atomic Red Team project, um, I got really excited about that just because that was sort of like my natural transition into Atomic Red Team. Uh, not really being super familiar with YAML at the time, uh, but having something where I could just easily take any existing test, not even knowing like how to structure YAML and whatnot, and just fire away at the test. Um, like I was able to very quickly uh, validate uh, detection logic and uh, validate uh, technique coverage um, like in a, in a relatively short period of time. So um, Atomic Red Team for me has been hugely important and I use it pretty much every day. Um, so why, why don't we go, go around the group and um, I, I'm curious to get your take on um, uh, different people seem to have like different ideas of what Atomic Red Team is, like different expectations of what it represents, um, how it should be interpreted so Carrie, I want to start with you. Like if you could elaborate a little bit on like how you look at Atomic Red Team and how you leverage it uh, like internally or externally to, to your company. Okay. Um, what I love about Atomic Red Team is it's very specific and measurable. So a lot of times when we talk about um, detections and whether we have good detections or whether we have something covered or whether this one product is doing good work for us versus how well it compares to another product. I, that was always a very fluffy discussion. Like, yeah, you know, I, it, I think it's doing us a lot of good and uh, it seems to be better than this other one, but I can't give you any data on that. It's just kind of a sense I get. And, you know, if somebody might ask, well, if somebody tried this new attack I just heard about on Twitter, you know, would we detect that? That was always like, a hard to answer question and all of those were hard to answer and very fluffy and very uh, you know more of an opinion instead of a fact and so atomic red team brings it to where you that's very repeatable and measurable and and if somebody says would you detect x y and z i i can definitively answer that and i can also easily uh tell the difference between various products we might be using to say you know this product's detecting you know a hundred of these atomic tests and this product is detecting 20 and they're all repeats of what we already have so you know it helps us definitively answer all these questions we all wanted to know answers to that we we only could talk about in a non-specific way before so that's that's the big big win that I, i've seen come from this 
Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely echo that. Like it's, it's so nice to have tests developed uh, where you can just like hand them to the person asking the question or run the test yourself um, in a repeatable fashion and like, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Like, do we see this slash do we detect this? Yes, no. Um, and if the answer is no, like then, you know, follow some triage process thereafter. And if the answer is yes, then um, hopefully it's consistently yes. And you've got the test to always back that up. So that's awesome. Cool. Uh, Valentina, how, how do you think about Atomic Red Team? What, what do you use it for? So um, I think you mentioned that uh, Atomic Red Team is a way of implementing like a procedure for a technique. So I think it a bit kind of in that way. Uh, but I, for me, it's also a, a really useful tool, tool to learn. So I do not, I come from a different background. Uh, and I, I've been in InfoSec for just kind of two years. I can probably new to the, to this, um, to this environment. And I realized that it's one thing to, you know, you can read a work with attack and understand what's going on or reading the report and understanding the reports. But it's not the same that have a tool that will actually help you implement what you're reading and in a fairly straightforward and simple way. Awesome. Thanks. And so uh, I, I think you, you mentioned, yeah, so you're, you're involved in threat hunting. Like, um, is, is there a connection between you learning and using Atomic Red Team and your role in doing threat hunting? Um, so I don't know if exactly I a connection regarding my, my work. It's more like I went to SANS conference last October and I saw Roberto uh, showing her again his tools. And I was like, but I really want to know what he's talking about. I wasn't able to, to fairly understand what he was doing. Uh, so that got me into wanting to do hunting and to setting up the lab and everything. And then I went, okay, now I understand what he's doing. I understand the tools. I understand the, the idea behind it, but how do I learn to do it? And that's where Atomic Threat Team actually plays a part. Awesome. Cool. All right. So Hari, how, how do you think about Atomic Red Team? Like what, what does it mean to you? And how do you use it? So I got started with Atomic Red Team when I started my internship last month. So it's just been only two months uh, since I started Atomic Red Team. So uh, I just I use it as a learning platform to learn the different types of tactics, techniques that are in the attack matrix. And uh, it covers both the theoretical and practical concepts of uh, that those techniques. So I guess it serves as a perfect learning platform for any student to work on anything in the information security domain, actually. So my areas of research lies in malware analysis and ransomware and those kind of stuff. So when I think about it, uh, the different types of tactics that, uh, that the malware or ransomware uses. So when I think about it, I can see what are the tactics that the ransomware uses and how it helps me to analyze those malware and ransomware. So that's how it helps me. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. While while you're mentioning that, so like thinking of the techniques that ransomware and mm. malware might use, um, to me, like Atomic Red Team offers an opportunity um, as you're learning about the capabilities of like whatever malware or ransomware sample you're using to like pick apart the individual techniques that are being employed by that malware and then yeah. learn the process of like re-implementing that functionality in a way that can kind of lends itself to like being audited. So like other eyeballs can see it and be like, and can clearly point out like, okay, like this is emulating ransomware behavior, but it's not actually going to own me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah, it, and, it's, and it's, it's repeatable. What too. malicious looks like and without executing the malicious code being get to know how, what malicious looks like. So uh, Atomic Red Team serves a, serves a perfect platform for the analysis, forensic analysis stuff. And yeah. in, uh, in other teams too, yeah. Now, Hari, um, you, you mentioned a while back uh, 
You're interested in Atomic Red Team uh, as it relates to uh, iPhone, like iPhone and Android. Is is that accurate? yeah, mobile mobile framework? So Atomic Attack has a mobile framework too, but Atomic Red Team doesn't have one. So I thought of implementing a mobile framework for the uh, mobile frame. I I thought of implementing a mobile framework and add it to the Atomic Red Team so that even uh, mo even we can detect uh, detection, we can build detections for the mobile too. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So, um, do, do you mind elaborating a little bit on like what your experience was with Atomic Red Team? So, like, it, if if I were to to guess, um, it seems as though Atomic Red Team itself, like the the schema, the way that you describe a test, mm -hmm. was in a format that was probably already going to work for you, but you just needed an execution framework to be able to consume the mobile specific tests that you wrote? Is that, is that accurate? Uh, no, actually uh, we can execute PowerShell or Python, any kind of scripts for the Windows or Mac or Linux machines, but uh, uh, mobiles doesn't work that way. So we, can, we should build it into an app and then execute it. So what I thought of was uh, building my own MDM and then uh, just like the way like we wrote YAML tests for the Windows and Mac machines, Windows Linux and Mac machines, we can write those specific scripts and build it into an app and then execute it using an MDM. Because of uh, an MDM can install app in uh, Android or mobile phone, we can just directly download. We can just consider each technique as an app and then we can just download it over there and then we can just execute it and then check whether it is detected or not detected. Uh, that, that's what my idea was. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's cool that, in, in my opinion, that like Atomic Red Team as like the, the way to describe the test was already there for you. Yeah, um, it it's just a matter a of like- structure. Yeah, it yeah. already has a perfect structure to, for me to work on it. It's actually a framework so that I can, it's like a pluggable framework. So which I can take it from, which I can take, only I have to just change the tests and I don't have to do anything else. I just have to change the test and then work on the MDM part. I don't have to do anything else, like how to format, how to structure. I don't have to think about any of those constraints. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think we like explicitly talked about it, um, but I, I wanted to hear everyone's story about like, what, when was it that you first heard about Atomic Red Team? And like, what, what was it about it that, that drew you into it? Carrie? Yeah, I heard about Atomic Red Team at a security conference. I don't remember exactly who was speaking. Uh, I think it might've been Casey, but um, it, the idea piqued my interest, just the idea that you could, you know, basically have these sub modules of, you know, execute this attack, execute that attack. It seemed like a good resource at the time I was a red teamer. It seemed like a good resource to go learn about stuff. You know, Twitter's good, but it's, it, it's kind of hard to go back through and pick things out. It's something you just have to watch things go by kind of thing where this is like a nicely formatted structure of here's a bunch of ways to do this. And here's a bunch of ways to do this. So if, if I start feeling like my ways of getting persistence are getting stale, well, I can go to this library of ideas and, and they're not just ideas, but they're actual commands like, Oh, uh, well, that seems like a good idea to do it that way. How would I do it? Oh, I run the scheduled task command with these, uh, you know, I have all the information at my hands, not just the ideas, but the actual commands and I can try them and I can say, well, that, that seems to work really well. Um, and so it piqued my interest and I st planted the idea in my head that this would be really valuable. And even as a red teamer, um, there's a lot of great impact I was able to have and the team was able to have on the red team to influence change. But at the same time, I recognize that there are better ways to do some things in terms of making sure you have 
systematic coverage of all TTPs. Uh, maybe red teaming isn't the best way to achieve that goal, but red teaming has some other strengths. So, so each way, you know, going through something in kind of an, an atomic red team fashion, very systematically full coverage of the whole matrix has some benefits over um, red team that might do more of a one path through through kind of way, but has you know, ways to impact. So I saw that there were value, there was value there and could provide, you know, in some ways better value um, than red teaming in some ways not, but uh, I started to develop a desire to work with that more and to, uh, and to start up really a program where we could maximize our benefit from atomic red team and, and so I, you know, basically I, I let that conference talk and that peaked interest kind of just build in me over the few years as I remained on the red team, just in the back of my mind, think, you know, things would come up where I'd realize, you know, really, if we wanted to do this part of our defense is better, atomic red team would really help here. And, and then I did switch, uh, I think a year and a half ago, switched over to the blue side but of course, I didn't. I didn't lose my love of offensive tooling. So this has been wonderful for me, not only to um, get all the benefits of Atomic Red Team, but as a way for me to kind of stay really in the purple space. So I did join Blue Team, but I really get to continue learning all the attacks and all the details of the attacks, even down to the point of what's easy to detect, what's hard to detect, what needs to be detected. Um, so I really kind of get a full circle view of it, uh, being on the blue team, but still staying offensive. So, uh, that's how I got my start. That's awesome. Um, yeah, quick, quick question. Um, how, how would you say your experience as a red teamer influences how you go about writing atomic tests? Uh, I don't know if I have a really great comment for that. I, I just know that I'm able to pull from those experiences on the red team and, and know what worked at the time I was doing what worked really well. And, you know, if I go into atomic red team and say, Oh, we don't have that in here. And I use that all the time on red team and it's so effective. We should really get that in there. So at least that background of, um, kind of being able to prioritize some of the attacks and, and get a feeling for, you know, the, this stuff works really well and is not being detected well right now. We should be sure and get this in there where these other things are also interesting, but maybe uh, you, you just don't see it used as much or you rarely saw that it worked. Um, and so it did give me some perspective on maybe where to prioritize some of the efforts and also where uh, some big missings were in, in our scripted attacks. Awesome. Yeah, prioritization makes total sense. Uh, one place my, my brain was taking me, like when I've seen some of the tests that you've written, uh, you're really good about implementing input arguments and so like when I see atomic tests that have uh, like a good set of input arguments, I interpret that as like that test was designed to be sufficiently modular to facilitate like any, in any instance where like an attacker does have control over certain aspects of the input that you want your test to be able to reflect those like mutations that the test runner might want to, to emulate. Yeah, and I, I did see a lot of times where it was so easy to bypass detections as a red teamer just by doing really simple things. Like instead of doing net use, you do net one use. And so when I, I do keep that in mind when I write the atomic test, like uh, if maybe I didn't write this test, but if it's an atomic test that downloads Mimi Cats from a URL and then runs it, I know that it's highly likely that a lot of detections are gonna one, look for it coming from that known Mimi Catch URL. 
or it's going to look for the word Mimi cat. So when I design uh, the atomics, I try to allow for input arguments that one work by default. So they work for people when they first try it, minus if their detections block it, but also you could easily host that somewhere else. And so you could uh, avoid thinking you're protected when you're not, when really they just won't let you download something from the PowerSploit repo or something. But if you just host that in your own GitHub and you name it something besides invoke Mimikatz, then suddenly it's not detected and it works. And so I do, I do keep that in mind where I don't want really weak detections making me feel like I, we have good detections. So I will put those as input args and, and, and kind of as a hint, like you'd probably don't want to really, you know, run this test downloading it from the known place you get Mimi cats from by name of Mimi cats. You should probably name it something else, put it in your own repo uh, that, you know, a, AV doesn't have um, deny on their deny list. And then you feel more confident that they're, that they're really detecting the right stuff instead of uh, a, a quick win like that. So I do keep that in mind. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Valentina, how did you, like how, how were you first introduced to Atomic Red Team? So my, the first time I heard about Atomic Red Team actually was during the my first conference as a speaker in PH Days 9. Um, if I'm honest, they were presenting atomic Fed coverage, and I said, cool thing, but I move on to another stuff. And then I, I don't know, in the work and getting from, into a tag, even a tag code, and other uh, daily, daily, daily reports and everything, I learned more about the Atomic Routine project. But it wasn't until I was trying to, to actually learn hunting when I got familiar with it. Um, and suddenly, um, how do you, I, I remember the first test I ever run was uh, a superficial attachment. If everybody knows how a superficial attachment knows, at least it, it has been, been reports and all. So I made this diagram, beautiful, that covered what I thought it was going to happen on the host side. Then I run the test, and it was nothing like my diagram. Like, no, so no, it wasn't that different. But uh, the process that I expected didn't trigger. They triggered other processes, and that's when it actually hit me uh, how powerful it could be as a tool for learning not only uh, how to make detections or to understand how to uh, do the attack, but also to understand how the operating system itself is working inside, uh, like in a more uh, practical way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll run my atomic tests with like Procmon running side by side to like validate that my mm -hmm. assumptions about the detection artifacts are roughly true. So yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, I'm I'm curious uh, when you were first learning Atomic Red Team, what were some of the roadblocks that you encountered? Like, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome to really feel sure. comfortable with it? Um, so the, I had an, I, I don't have a problem understanding what the test is going to do because I'm fairly familiar with the tech. Uh, but maybe when executing some tests, sometimes, uh, or I do not do it right, or the test doesn't work as I expected, or I'm not sure what is the workflow I should uh, go through to 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 execute it. But it's mostly because I am. Um, Sometimes I get this feeling that they are reading, written for someone that actually knows exactly what it's doing, which is not my case. It was like I come like to learn and to pick a bit of, and trying to, to see if I can put things together and make it work in a way that makes sense to me. And um, also I'm not a, a really a, a PowerShell developer, uh, but I ha I've been learning to, to, um, to at least get around with the PowerShell structure and test to modify them and, and in my uh, my convenience so that's more like uh, my lack inside right so there are things that are more about knowledge that i need to get but it's a really good thing for doing direct study because you know i i go to a test i want to run it and immediately i know where my my shortcomings are and why do i need to 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 learn more about or to just research more about in order to, to get better at what I'm doing. So 
So. Sweet, thank you. So Hari, how were you first introduced to Atomic Red Team? And once you started to get comfortable with it, uh, what, what were some of the challenges that, that you had to overcome? So uh, first, when I, was, uh, when I got introduced to Atomic Red Team, it was from my teammate, actually. Uh, I, was, uh, I wanted to contribute to an open source project. And, the same, and at the same time, I want to learn a lot about different types of attacks. So he suggested me to Atomic Red Team. And then I spoke with Carrie. And she told me, like, this would be the perfect platform to learn to learn and execute like what you have learned. So coming fresh out of universities, I learned a lot about cyber attacks and how to mitigate them, avoid them, detect them. But I didn't have a way to execute them. Uh, even if I execute it, uh, I don't know how it might compromise system. Suppose let's say I'm downloading a payload from the internet and executing it in my system. I don't know how it would affect my system, how it could compromise my system. So. Automic Red Team served as a perfect learning platform to learn and uh, detect and uh, mitigate what all the things that I have to do. I, I learned from top to bottom what are the things I have to do in the, in the life cycle of, a, of an attack. So uh, that's, that's where I got started with the Automic Red Team. And uh, coming to the roadblock, I, as far as I can remember, I, know I didn't have any. So when I started with Atomic Red Team, Carrie introduced me to it. And after that, uh, she told me to go through the Atomic Red Team project and ask if there are any questions. I called her the next day and I asked her, uh, what should I work on? And she, was, she told me that she was expecting some questions like how to, uh, what is an Atomic Red Team or like how to execute Atomic Tests. But you came in and you directly asked me like, uh, what, what should I work on? So I, didn't, I don't have any answer for that right now. Then she saw something and then she gave me some something to fix it in the Atomic Red Team. Atomic Red Team is like, it's, it's easy to get started. Whenever we get started with a project, let's say open source or office project, we have to look through the code and we need to have some domain knowledge in it. But Atomic Red Team is not like that. It's like self-explanatory. Uh, Atomics are like small tests that contains the description, the attack name, and the commands that I have to execute. So it has... Both, as I said before, it has both the theoretical and practical concepts, and it's self-explanatory. No one has to explain to you like how these things work and stuff like that. So uh, when you read it, it's totally self-explanatory, so that you can get started away with it right right now. Cool. Yeah, that's really cool to hear. Like just how quickly you're able to to pick it up and start getting comfortable with it. Um, yeah, I I can certainly speak to that as well. Like when I first got exposure to it, like considering there was already a PowerShell runner for atomic tests, like I already knew PowerShell really well. There was already a massive suite of atomic tests. The documentation on how to install the module and how to run tests was really good. The biggest roadblock for me was in learning how to write tests, like not only how to structure them properly, now, like, so what, what I first started doing was like, I would just use other atomic tests as references and then largely just like copy and paste and replace the different fields with uh, what I thought was going to describe like what I wanted to do. And that, there were some challenges there. Um, and uh, so there were two things like one, I, I, I didn't have a ton of exposure with YAML. so. Uh, when I was like copying and pasting stuff, sometimes like formatting would would screw me up. Um, that was easy enough to learn, um, but I still screw it up all the time, like when I'm doing stuff manually. And then, um, yeah, the other roadblock was just learning what the formal structure of like the schema that is Atomic Red Team uh, is. And so I was having to like dig around the Atomic Red Team uh, repository and I did eventually find uh, like a YAML schema um, and uh, sort of like right off the bat, uh, I, I made a vow to like never or at least very seldom write YAML tests by hand. And so one of the first things that I did was write some PowerShell code um, to generate the YAML for right. me. Um, I didn't anticipate using it a whole lot, but um, but actually, I, I have been recently um, 
For example, I recently used some of that functionality to generate a batch of 100 internal tests. And so like I wrote a quick script to, um, to generate like the different mutations that we were expecting for a certain technique that we were testing. And then it just dumped out a hundred tests for us. And it was like, it, it couldn't have been easier like after I wrote that little script. So that was like one cool use case. But then um, speaking to Atomic Red Team and Invoke Atomic Red Team being like these, uh, these awesome open source projects with a ton of uh, collaborators, Carrie came around and was like, oh, those functions to generate YAML for you are cool. I'm gonna build a GUI wrapper around that, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. Like I, I've been using that, uh, like just when, when I have to develop tests um, individually. And it's cool because like the UI is intuitive, but then the PowerShell functions that back it do a bunch of validation uh, to ensure that like you haven't really screwed anything up. And if you did, then it gives you like appropriate um, error, error messages or warnings. So those are the biggest um, roadblocks for me was just like really getting comfortable with the structure and knowing like what all is possible to be represented in a topic red team. But it, it didn't really take very long to, to get comfortable with that and to get over that hump. Um, and everyone in the community has been great. Like I can go ask Carrie a question like anytime I want. She's like always super responsive, which uh, I'm very appreciative of. Cool. Um, I want to go around real quick. Uh, so do all of you have experience writing at least one atomic test? No, actually I don't have one. Okay. Valentina, have you, uh, it sounds like you've written at least a few tests, yeah? Um, I have like executed them in my, in my computer, but the ones that are already uh, there for, for, the, for you to let to take, I have never contributed actually to the, to the framework. Gotcha, okay. Uh, is, is that something that um, you, you see yourself planning on, on doing? Yes, but that's gonna be like uh, the next step. Uh, so far, I'm going to try to uh, learn from all of the that are there, and then I'm going to try to 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 move forward and write my own. Cool. Yeah, it, um, just from my experience, it, it, it could definitely be like initially intimidating and like trying to get it right and it being an open source project, like wanting to satisfy everyone. I think it, like just having this idea in your head of what the perfect test would look like. But sure enough, like you put it out on the internet and uh, it's, it's, it may not uh, meet everyone's expectations. So that's, uh, it's always something to, to consider, but it's, it's definitely like a way to grow as well. And just like to get that honest feedback from, from the community, which has been great. Um, another thing I appreciate of Carrie is like all, all the feedback that she's given um, for like a lot of the work that I've done and like other team members have done. Yeah, I um, also want to offer that too. I, I am on the Slack channel, which Slack is great because it's super interactive conversations instead of like email type conversations. And several people have talked to me there and said, hey, I'm new. I'm interested in contributing, but I'm kind of confused how to get started. And, you know, we've started up Zoom sessions and screen shares and we walked through that and helped them you know get a solid test written and get it contributed and i love doing that you know there's something magical about um sharing and helping others and i love to do that so you know i offer that to anyone who gets on the atomic red team slack to just talk to me on there if you know you you're a little nervous about getting started. And, you know, these questions that I get also inspire me to do additional um, things. Like uh, I, I used to write the YAML by hand, but then, you know, I started helping people debug their YAML, which, you know, maybe sometime, one time I spent about 45 minutes between the two of us trying to figure out what was wrong with the YAML. And, you know, it was a couple extra, a sp extra space here, a missing space there, and maybe a missing dash. And, 
two people spent 45 minutes to figure that out. I was like, okay, this is way too hard. You know, um, I never want this to have to be someone's experience again. And, and that's what inspired the atomic GUI where you just fill out a web form and, and you know, Matt had just contributed all the, the really the hard part of all that was the back end code that could validate all input and spit out YAML. So really we just needed, you know, a nice little GUI form uh, to fill that out. So people didn't have to memorize PowerShell commands. And so that's kind of also what's beautiful about the community and open source is that we can all benefit from each other's contributions and build on top of them. And, and it was a wonderful example of that happening. Absolutely. Um, cool. So um, why don't we talk about our careers? Um, so let's let's go around the panel and I want to know, like, how, how has Atomic Red Team helped you career wise? Or um, alternatively or additionally, uh, how has your career helped you uh, get comfortable with Atomic Red Team. Either way, uh, Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, well, I kind of mentioned already the technical values, but something I really didn't expect coming into uh, Atomic Red Team, I got started with Atomic Red Team about exactly a year ago, was my first investigation into it. And so one huge benefit that I didn't realize was just the community and um, and that's really been enhanced by that Slack channel because it's so easy to talk and connect with people across the community that have, you know, at least one common interest, which is uh, Atomic Red Team and InfoSec. And, and I have been able to meet not only all the folks at Red Canary, but uh, people across several industries. And it's so fun when somebody will reach out with you know, if they're brave enough to ask one question or introduce themselves, then then I love to ask them, you know, what's your experience with Atomic Red Team? What's been hard? What are you using them for? Who do you work for? How long have you been in InfoSec? And just meet people. Uh, I I feel like it, it has worked even a hundred times better than any networking that I ever did at a conference because you, you know, you're at a conference for a few days you happen to bump into a few people um, that maybe you don't have enough time to find that common ground, but in Atomic Red Team, you already have that common ground. And you also don't have that limited time of, of that few minutes in the hall when you bump into someone and introduce yourself, uh, you can maintain that relationship. So uh, honestly, that that's the thing I value most, even though the technical side has a lot of great value too, but for me personally and career wise uh, are the connections that I've made and, and that sense of fulfillment that comes from uh, contributing back. Well, your, your contributions are very much appreciated. Valentina. Yes. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah. What has Atomic Red Team done for you uh, career wise? I'm gonna say that more at my routine too, but also like open source has done a lot for me, uh, career-wise and personally. Um, to be able to, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for uh, other people that got out there and shared their knowledge and their expertise and their tools uh, that I could use to learn. And, and that led me to use the Summit Red Team, which is also free and out there for everyone to use. Um, uh, the possibility to not only have learned from it, but also to, to give a little back with, with the, the little thing I wrote that got so much attention and it brought me here, which I completely unexpected for me. Um, I think uh, it, it means a lot. It's like uh, what Carrie said about doing the magic of contributing. Uh, I think I've, I used to feel more uh, someone that was looking the community from from the benches, and now I feel more like someone that is in the community too, and I think that is precious. That is precious. That is awesome. And this brought us all together, so I get to chat with all of you, and this is awesome. Hari. Uh, so. I haven't been using Atomic Red Team for my career actually. So I built tools for the 
uh, information security department but uh, uh, automatic get team gave me a confidence which i couldn't get elsewhere even if i had taken like 10 or 20 courses in the university and but still i wouldn't have been confident but it made me confident whatever team i get into say red team blue team network security team security operations center whatever team i am in i can use automatic red team everywhere like the things i have learned from automatic red team everywhere the contributions that i have made to the automatic red team and those uh, those may, may, uh, those are like a way of showcasing my skills my coding skills and the things i have learned so uh, it has been helpful in that way and uh, i can say this for all the students actually so if you, they want to showcase their coding skills and what they have learned in the university, they can contribute to open source project. And I suggest Atomic Red Team because it's easy to get started, as I said before. Even if you don't have the uh, domain knowledge, you can just come and get started and then you can just get started very quickly compared to other open source projects. Secondly, it helps in resume building. So. Uh, let's say uh, before I would have written like I studied about different types of cyber attacks and how to mitigate them in my resume. Now what I would write is I built detections by executing different techniques in the attack matrix using the atomic red team and the atomic red team is used by like many organizations to check their detection. So having atomic red team in your resume uh, will completely boost your profile. Uh, so coming to the networking opportunities that I got, uh, I just started with Atomic Red Team last month and now I'm in a webcast speaking about how it helped me. So that's a huge networking opportunity for me. And uh, as we had discussed before, uh, the mobile framework for the Atomic Red Team. So uh, I had that idea, but I don't know whom to discuss it with or uh, who can guide me. So I just posted it in the Slack channel and keep the CTO of the Red Canary. He just pinned me and we discussed it and he gave me some insights. So that's another huge networking opportunity for a student, for a, for a cybersecurity student. Uh, as students, we get lesser opportunities to interact with the industry people and uh, Atomic Great team had helped me in that way too. So I recently got awarded uh, the Black Hat Student Scholarship to attend the Black Hat Conference this year. So I guess Atomic Red Team, contributing to Atomic Red Team helped me build a better profile than I had before to deserve this scholarship. So it had helped me in many ways that I couldn't imagine, I couldn't have imagined before. That's awesome. Yeah, and congrats on getting that scholarship. That's really cool. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, for me, I guess what's helped me out career-wise with Atomic Red Team is it's really helped formalize the way that I think about testing. And testing is a huge focus of my role at Red Canary. And speaking to the community aspect, um, I always find it really enlightening to hear how other people think about tests. Um, cause like I, I may have my own respective, uh, biases, preferences, uh, ignorance, right. And so like having this large community, uh, circling around atomic red team where everyone thinks about atomic red team and testing in general in their own unique way. Um, I really enjoy hearing because I would never tell anyone that like, there is one way to do atomic red team, like. Atomic Red Team, to me, is just a schema, right? It's a document that describes executing a thing, right? So we could get a little more specific about, like, what that thing is. And, like, more specifically, that thing to me is it, it's a way to, in a repeatable fashion, execute a procedure, right? When we're talking about TTPs. So it's a way to potentially improve coverage of techniques. Um, and just validate your detection coverage in, in general. And so um, the more I interact with uh, like people like you and uh, others in the community and get their ideas on how they think about testing, that helps me write better tests. So like I mentioned, like Carrie's really good use of input arguments in atomic tests, like that's something that is um, really like in the forefront of my mind when I'm developing tests 
is that I want them to be as modular as possible, um, but also as like simple and succinct as possible. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's been very enlightening for me. It's just really, it's really helped mature how I think about uh, testing techniques and behaviors. Um, and yeah, I've already mentioned it. Like I didn't know about YAML before, but now I know more than enough, like probably more than I need to know about YAML, but that was just another cool opportunity to recognize, like to learn a thing good enough to recognize that I don't like that thing. And then to build automation around never having to worry about that thing again. <laughs> and so like, I, I don't know, you could call it like spite or hate driven development. So there was a, there was a good, good opportunity there. <laughs> Cause uh, at, like when I think about YAML, um, I think of it like the inverse of, of regexes. Like if you're good at writing regexes, like they're relatively easy to write, but horrible to read. But YAML to me is like, it's very easy to read, but it can be at times difficult to write, especially when you're trying to do it from scratch. Um, and fortunately there's, there's a large community of, of people to, to help me uh, uh, clear, clear those hurdles. Um, and also like, yeah, Again, like Atomic Red Team, it, it brings me to all of you. Like I would have otherwise never had the opportunity to meet all of you, um, to engage regularly with Carrie as a fellow Atomic Red Team maintainer. So um, yeah, I'll bring it all back to just how great this community is and how welcoming and supportive and inclusive this community has been. Um, I'm, I try to be sensitive to like when I identify when uh, like gatekeeping may be going on. Like I don't get that sense at all in the Atomic Red Team community, which is great. Um, another sense that I've gotten is that uh, there are no dumb questions. Uh, and kind of to Carrie's point, like when a more rudimentary question is asked, that's an opportunity for us as like regular contributors to supply better documentation, better educational opportunities. And so uh, call Carrie for like really grabbing that, grabbing those opportunities by, by the horns and, and rolling with, with that and all the great educational uh, content and documentation that she's put out there. So I wanna go around one more time and just give any uh, last parting thoughts that you have about anything uh, community Atomic Red Team. Carrie? I just want to reiterate uh, that we love to see new contributors. Uh, one of my favorite things is looking at a PR that has the little first time contributor tag on it. Um, it it's, it's so fun to watch that grow. I know it can take some courage to uh, figure out and do that first contribution and you know, you may be nervous about it, but uh, it's it's so great to see that grow because it, we know that it's an investment in the future. So if we can get somebody willing to take that leap and, and get that first contribution in and we can encourage them when they do that, then we know that this could be, you know, a, a career full of additional contributions that and you know you go from having 10 contributors to 100 to a thousand and suddenly this this is growing in a way that you could have never grown it yourself it was if it was your own personal project and also it's it's wonderful to have something that um the community knows about and that you can put on your resume and say i'm a regular contributor to the open source atomic red team project and and have people know what that means and and see the value in it it's it's kind of i think of it as uh benefiting you know three three things at once it benefits your job your commute your it strengthens your uh defense posture at work if that's a position you're in uh it uh builds your own resume and it helps the community so it's cool that you know something you do for work 
is actually you're you're getting three times the benefit from it. Uh, it's not just a, a unknown something you're doing at work, but uh, something that uh, you get. It's a three for one deal. <laughs> but uh, and I appreciate all the insights from everyone here, Valentina. It's it's fun to hear and echo um, some of the things they said and to be reminded of the great benefits that come from being involved. Thank you. Valentina, last thoughts? Yes, uh, I think I'm going to uh, speak to people out there that it might be like me that maybe was afraid uh, at, uh, at first that doesn't know where to start. And the truth, uh, I'm going to say something that I said a lot to myself and uh, that I try to say a lot to my friends is that you probably can't do whatever you set your mind to do. So you just have to lose that fear and just Set your, set your goal and sit down and do it. And that's kind of what I would say. Uh, I think that the, the, major, the major thing I've learned in this past two years and my learning journey has been that. And I think it's a valuable lesson that should resonate in, in people that, that might be wanting to start. And that here's a good place to start. And I think this community, uh, it's very welcoming. and for people that, that wants to learn and that really wants and tries to learn. And do not be afraid to ask is another light of lesson. That's great advice. Thank you. Hari? Uh, first, Final when thoughts? I started contributing uh, to Atomic Red Team, I was so upright, so for each and every line I code, I would have ping carry and then she would hop in for a quick Zoom call and then she would help me out. So uh, even when I get started, the community has a lot of resources, for example, like Carrie's uh, getting started with Atomic Red Team and the how to write YAML, this, uh, Atomic GUI, using Atomic GUI. So those, those are the videos that uh, help me to, uh, that would help anyone to get started with Atomic Red Team. And uh, uh, Valentina's uh, blog also like, uh, gave me some insights about great hunting which I haven't been exploring before. So uh, the community has a lot of resources that can, that any, anyone can uh, look through and then get started with their contributions directly. And yeah, that's it. Awesome, thank you. Well, we are running out of time here. I uh, just wanna thank you all for joining and talking with me today. Um, very grateful for your time taking time out of your day. All the attendees, uh, I really appreciate all the, all the time that you've spent uh, joining us to uh, hear us talk about our careers and Atomic Red Team. And we certainly hope um, that if you're not already engaged in say like the Atomic Red Team Slack, uh, that you join in, join in the conversation and um, hope that you'll feel as welcomed as everyone else uh, here on the panel has, has described. Um, so reach out, ask questions anytime. We don't bite. Uh, there are no dumb questions. Uh, we're all here to learn regardless of our experience level. We always have something new to learn. We're all, in my opinion, like we're, we're all perpetual noobs and there are no exceptions to that. So uh, again, thank you everyone for your time. I'm very grateful for chatting with you all today. And um, again, go back to the Atomic Red Team Slack where you'll see all the references for how to get started with the Atomic Red Team and start contributing. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.